Welcome along to the Two Man Wall. It's Johnny Ward and Adam Russell, and we're going to get uh, cut to the chase here. Really, we have an absolute cracker of a game uh, tomorrow evening, which is between Liverpool and Chelsea. A massive, massive game for the top four. Um, Adam, you're going to discuss some of the injury problems that Liverpool have faced this season, and there's been a lot made of that. But just first, I should mention eight to fifteen Liverpool to finish in the top four. They're still like long odds on to finish in the top four, despite the fact that they're sixth. Um, last weekend didn't go too badly for them, but this game is really interesting. They're a point behind Chelsea, and it it will have a you'd imagine will have a large bearing on where these two finish. Yeah, I think again it's going to be another interesting game. We thought that about the Chelsea United game at the weekend, though, and it was absolutely horrendous. Like I think some of the yeah. um, some of the games between the big six this season have actually been really disappointing. I think neither team actually really looked like they went out to try and win that game at the weekend, which is a shame given the position that both of them are in, in terms of chasing the top four or the top two. Um, and I obviously said to you way, way back at the sort of the peak of Liverpool's uh, bad form that I still think they'll finish second. Still don't th- think United are going to end up dropping points at some point. And I still think that Liverpool are the second best team in the league. And I still think there's plenty, you know, there, I think there are seven points behind United now. Um, and only two points back from the top four. So um, I do think that it's going to be an interesting finish. But um, I wanted to start with the injuries because I think I was looking at the table of like who's had the most injuries, who's got the most injuries mm. and how many minutes have been missed by various um, teams, senior players. And I think it tells an interesting story, not only about why the league has panned out the way it's panned out so far, but also the way it might pan out over the next few weeks as we move towards the end of the season. Now, Liverpool's injury record, obviously people made a lot of it. They've currently got eight senior absentees, uh, including obviously some big names, Alisson, Van Dijk, etc., Joe Gomez. Um, But in terms of the minutes that those players have missed, no senior players have missed more minutes than Liverpool's this season. Mm. And that tells the story of, just how difficult it's going to... If you've got eight senior players missing from a squad that... Because squad depth is never something that has been Liverpool's strongest um, strongest asset. They've always... They're a good start in 11 over the last two seasons, but we've always kind of we've looked to the bench and we've seen people like Shakiri and we've maybe... And Origi and thought, OK, well, maybe they haven't got the quality in reserve that Man City have got. And Man City are the complete opposite in that they've only got one um, senior player out injured at the minute. In Nathan Ake, and they've got plenty of cover in that position. So it hasn't been a hu- it hasn't had a huge impact on them. I think they already had, in terms of quality anyway, they already had the deepest squad um, at the start of the season. So when you look at it like that, perhaps it's not that surprising that City have, have run away with the league, particularly given the condensed nature of the COVID season. Keeping your big squad fit and firing is probably the the key to success this season, it appears. I think I think Liverpool as well have been a victim of just how busy they've been over the last three years. And maybe, you know, the, with, with the COVID situation last year, they didn't really get a proper break because I presume they were just still training away during lockdown. And that's probably caught up with them a bit. A lot of their players have had bang average seasons by their standards. But getting to this game, this is 5-4 to four Liverpool and 2-1 two to one Chelsea. Uh, it's an interesting one to price up because Liverpool's form has been poor, obviously, all those uh, losses before the win last weekend. Um, Chelsea been going well. How do you call it? Again, it's a difficult one. Um, so, like, Liverpool have obviously lost their last four games at Anfield, which is mm. pretty unprecedented. I think they've lost the last four at Anfield, which was many they lost in the first 100 under Klopp. Um, which is just crazy. They've never lost five consecutive home games in their history. So they're staring and they're staring down the barrel of it tonight. Like the way they've been playing, Chelsea can definitely go there and, and beat them. I also thought another inter- interesting angle on this one, particularly given that the Chelsea United game was was nil nil on Sunday. That this is the only uh, only one Premier League fixture ever, Everton against United has had fewer nil nils than this one. So mm. if you're ever looking at a start and thinking, hmm, I'm going to go against the grain on that one, nil-nil is 11-1 to one in this one. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it finished nil-nil, if it was a very kind of similar tense game as we saw um, on Sunday. The form, the record sort of backs Liverpool. They've won each of the last four meetings against Chelsea. I think Blackburn are the only Premier League team to ever win five consecutive meetings with Chelsea in the Premier League. But Chelsea have conceded only two goals since Tom Tuchel came in um, and they're yet to lose. So it's hard to kind of say that 
that, that Chelsea aren't, aren't going to go into the game as favourites. I think Chelsea... Uh, well, I find the betting a bit strange because I don't, I, don't, yeah. I, I don't really think home advantage matters at this stage, right? There's nobody at the game. Liverpool have lost their last four home games. Maybe it's motivation, but Chelsea are defending well. Liverpool... You know, you, you mentioned, obviously, Alisson. Liverpool are very, very vulnerable at the back at the moment. Henderson is out, obviously, as well. Now, I don't, I couldn't really make them strong favourites here at all. No, I couldn't. I think the only thing that home advantage gives you at the minute is the practical side of, you know, not having to travel mm. and, you know, familiar surroundings and all that. But in terms of the, the impact of actually playing at home, and obviously there's no crowd, so... I'd agree with you in that sense. It's hard to look at Liverpool at the minute and say, yeah, I think they'll win this one. I think, obviously, we mentioned that, that Chelsea have stopped conceding goals. I think Chelsea to win to nil is uh, nine to two with Star Sports bet. And it might not be a, you know, it might not be a convincing win. It might be a one nil or a two nil or whatever. But I think that's the way that I'd probably lean at this point with everything that's going on. Like you say, the Liverpool um, back line has been decimated. I think they'll be thankful. It looks like Alisson will return. I think him and Jota mm. and Naby Keita are all trained this week. So um, they'll have a few, they'll be boosted a bit by some returns from injuries. So I think that could help them. But like I say, if I had to pick a winner, I think Chelsea to win to nil. Again, I'm probably leaning towards the draw though um, at seven to two. So I just think it, a one one, a nil nil, it's going to be a close one. And I just, these top six games, neither, neither side needs seem to really be going for the win in these games at the minute. It seems mm. to be. You know, we just don't want to lose these games. And it's disappointing because when you get these big six games, you want the two the two of the, the top teams to go at each other, don't you? You want them to to go to attack and try and win the game. And it's just disappointing from a from a neutral's perspective to kind of to see some of the games that we've had between the top six this weekend. But um the other one I've picked out for you is thought um the way Chelsea played at the weekend, obviously they started with Giroud up front. And the way they played just didn't really suit him. Didn't really get many crosses in. Obviously, they've the likes of Reese James have been dropped and replaced with Callum Hudson Odoi in that wing back role. Um, mm. I thought I thought Hudson Odoi played well. It just didn't get in the kind of service that Olivier Giroud would thrive on. So I would expect uh, Tammy Abraham to come back into the team tonight. So an interest he'll kind of lead the line for Chelsea. I think nineteen to ten uh, for him to score any time is an interesting one as well. Yeah, five to four draw no bet Chelsea will probably be my call or two to one Chelsea. I think they have a great chance. Um, and obviously you mentioned Allison as well. He's had a you know an absolutely horrific time with his dad passing away, and it it is just one of these seasons for Liverpool where anything that seemingly could go wrong has gone wrong. But they're still eight to fifteen, finishing the top four. Two teams uh, who are in first and second: Manchester City, Manchester United. This is an interesting one at the weekend. So it's four to seven United. Sorry, Not City. Yeah, nothing interesting, about, nothing interesting Not, about City win. Nothing interesting about it. City win. Now they they kind of um they kind of hobbled to victory last night. Performs at twenty one victories in a row, and they they can kind of have the um you know luxury of basically making changes now and, and sort of focus on the Champions League because the league is over. But at the same time, they'll want to win this. And uh, yeah, four to seven didn't seem a bad price to me to be honest. The way they're playing. Yeah, I'm not sure I'll be back in uh, Man City to win the league at uh, one to two. One to two fifty, yeah. <laughs> not sure there's uh, not sure there's much value in there for the punters. But I think uh, they were like five to two earlier in the season, were they? I think they were as I think they were as mm. as nine to two at one point, weren't they? Um, back oh. in, I think in November they were as big as as nine to two after they went on that. They went on a bit of let a us know on, on Twitter if you're on Man City at any sort of a price. I, I thought they were in big trouble. I thought the Pep Magic uh, had gone, but maybe it was bringing in the assistant coach or something. They've just changed the way they play, and they're absolutely brilliant at the moment. And they should win this. It's an interesting one. Where do you think this Man City team ranks compared to the Man City teams that you know, the what the Centurions and the team that won the double under Pep in that first season? Like, because I think they're just as good, if not better. Ah, they're, they're exceptional. And, you know, I was looking at it last weekend. They've they've won player in the top 10 goal scorers in the Premier League, in the top 10, despite the fact they're running away with them. That's Gundogan, who would have been a million to be, you know, in the top 10, basically, and obviously had an unbelievable 2021 so far. But they, they've, they've played without De Bruyne as if, like, they're almost, if not as good, almost better in ways. And that doesn't make any sense. But Aguero, they, take De Bruyne yeah, Aguero. and Aguero out, and they're probably better. Yeah, like Aguero for me, 
I think in, in general play, he's probably like he's such a good goal scorer. I think in general play, he's probably not not like really, really top, 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 top class. And I think just the way they're, they they kind of can float around their players in, in, in the offensive shape. And they have they've great, um, like for, for a bunch of, you know, millionaires from different countries, they really have great team spirit. I think they were hurt by not winning the league last season. And they look really, really hungry in games. And I've been impressed by them. And their defense is clearly like basically uh, getting a very good time of enjoyment out of not conceding goals. They, they just love not conceding goals. They, they've a, uh, they, they, and they have a pragmatic way of playing. And I think as well, they don't, the high octane game is slightly gone. I think they've probably measured it that this is a mad season. We've an awful lot of games. We have to slow down a little bit, but they still run the game. Um, I, I find them fantastic to watch. I love going to go and um, just love watching them play. I think your point there about, being pragmatic brings us back onto the game last night. They had the mm. game in control under control at 1-0. And obviously Cody popped up with the equalizer. But it's like they just, as soon as that equalizer went in, it was like they released a handbrake. You know, it's like a Formula yeah. One race where the leader goes off and he's miles out in front. And all of a sudden the, the guy in second starts starts getting a bit closer and he goes, All right, okay, I'll uh, stop banging in the times. And it's the yeah. same thing, like they just as soon as it looked like they might be under threat, they just switched it up a gear, three goals in the last 10 minutes. All of a sudden, they've won the game, a game that could have ended a draw. They've won 4-1, and it and it looks comfortable. Now, they haven't trailed for a single minute in any of their last 19 games, which I just think oh my is God. incredible. That's equal to a 22-year-old Premier League record that was set by Arsenal back in uh, 1999. So, obviously, they That's go That's bonkers. Through- if they go through the United game uh, at the weekend without trailing and they'll have beaten that record. And like you say, it's absolutely bonkers. They've just not conceded any goals. It's it's crazy. Obviously. Five to two to win the Champions League as well. If you think, um, you know, obviously PSG with Pochettino there and Bayern are very good, but like the rest, I think, you know, Man-, Man City are better than them. Five to two uh, for me is an appealing bet. But what are you looking at here as well? Is the four to seven, I... I I know you've mentioned Sterling as well. City to win, Sterling scoring over two and a half. Second half goals is 22 to one. There's an interesting one. Yeah, I just thought, because it was similar to, in the sense of the Wolves game last night, where again, like I said, they were in control and then all of a sudden they needed a couple goals. So they turned it up a gear and they grabbed three yeah. in the last 10 minutes. Whether it will be the same in this game, it might be more of a case of the first half is quite tense um, and United, uh, I suspect United will put a lot of men behind the ball in this one. And, and as they do, they'll look to play on the counter. But I think, yeah, City to win. Sterling did everything but score last night. I think he's been superb this season. He has. Um, so for him to score City to win and over 2.5 second half goals um, is 22 to 1. And, yeah, I can't really look beyond Man City in this one. I think they're a much better team. I would be interested to know um, a prize from the traders at Star for a, a Man City quadruple. They're obviously already in the Cup final. Um, and they're still yeah. in the FA Cup and the Premier League, like you say, is all but wrapped up. So it, it almost seemed an impossible thing to achieve like five years ago. But looking at this Man City team, I think they can they can do it. I think like I genuinely think like they can win all four trophies. This Absolutely, season. I I think to, in fairness to Pep as well, like it, it does show his genius because they've quite patently changed the way they play and. All this, you know, all the talk about Mourinho. Mourinho probably hasn't changed that much as a coach. And, you know, it's kind of evident now that he's a bit of a has-been. Whereas Guardiola must have recognised that they did need to do something differently this season. But I'm not sure Manchester City are actually that tired. Like, Liverpool have been really, really fatigued in games. You can see it mentally and physically. I think Man City are actually very fresh. And I think you were saying even recently, they may not have peaked yet. They have a very, very good bench. Bench. De Bruyne has missed a scatter of games now, um, and they just look like they—they they look like if you were to go ten years, fifteen years down the line, and you got all these Man City players together and said, "What was it like playing in 2021?" They'd be like, "I absolutely love playing in that team because they just—they look like they're just going to win. They love the way they're playing. It's just like it must be great fun." And I think they've loads more to offer. I think it's very—they're very, very hard to beat with that defense as well. So I like the fives too, and I, I might actually have a little play in the quadruple as well if the if the Star Sports traders who we're going to mention as well momentarily can get their act together and give us a special to keep us interest towards the end of the season. I think the tiredness thing that you mentioned is a byproduct of them keeping the ball. I think we talked about it on the show before. Mm. When, they're, when they're leading games, in previous seasons, they've kind of gone for the jugular at one or two nil and tried to win mm. five nil every game. And I don't see that in this situation. It's measured. 
Yeah, exactly. It's we're two 0 up. We'll just knock the ball around the bat. We know that teams aren't going to press us high because if they do, we'll pick them apart and we will win five nil. Mm. So when they are they are leading, they just recycle the ball around the back, around the midfield. If there's an opportunity for them to get in on goal, then they'll take it. But yeah, measured is a, a really good word for it. And I think that will help them peak at the right time this season in, in sort of April and May. And I just can't see anyone stopping them. I think if they if they meet Bayern at some point in the Champions League, then then maybe. But other than that, I just don't think there's another team in Europe that can that can match them. I'm with you. Um, before we before we go as well, and we will mention uh, the Trader Challenge, uh, League of Ireland starting uh, the Friday of Cheltenham, and I'm reliably informed Star Sports will have price on that, so we might have a little chat about that in due course. Uh, it's going to be an interesting season. Starting off behind closed doors, but uh, Sean McGovern's bidding to win the title again. Very interesting challenges behind them. But in terms of the Trader Challenge, 29 players won a 10-quid free bet last week. That's how badly the Traders did. Now, I'm not going to you know, um, dance on their grave here, because the boy... Flynn was given out about them effectively on Monday saying they couldn't have done any worse over the weekend. 29 <laughs> players won a 10 quid free bet. Uh, that's 290 sterling in aggregate. And Albert Garrett actually won a 200 quid free bet for the best entry. Playing again this week and we have to choose from Sheffield United, Southampton, Villa Wolves, Brighton, Leicester, West Brom, Newcastle, Liverpool, Fulham, Manchester City, Manchester United. Simple as that. Anyone who beats the traders win a £10 free bet, courtesy of Star Sports. And the best winning entry will bag themselves a £200 free bet like your man, uh, Albert Garrett, over the weekend. Congratulations to him. Top man. And just a, a cursory look as we finish up. Bradford City versus Bolton for uh, your beloved Wanderers the weekend. We are flying, mate. Six wins in a row, seven wins out of eight. I think we're just five points off top now comfortably inside the uh, the playoff positions. I told you I bagged us at eight to one last week um, before we played. Uh, who did we play last week? We bagged them at eight to one and now we're in as short as um, five to two to be promoted. So still worth getting on. In my opinion, there is no good teams in League Two. I would say they're all equally average. Um, so it's far from over. But um, yeah, it's a good time to be a Bolton fan for a change. Top man, Adam. Thanks, Johnny. Have a good week, mate. Yeah, you too. And do check out uh, the website for the Trader Challenge. 29 people want a free tenner bet, and that will buy you a nice takeaway. A lot of people are eating a lot of takeaways at the moment. We shall talk to you next week. 